Well, hello there, Nibble Nashers. It's your pal Al here once again. And it's a quickie video today. I'm just going to introduce you to the Sound Blaster 16 card. But this is not any Sound Blaster 16 card. Oh no, it's the Sound Blaster 16 Vibra PNP, standing for Plug and Play. Back in the day, around 1995, this thing called Windows 95 came out and it offered something called Plug and Play. PNP for short. Often, people called that plug and pray because it didn't really work that well. This card had the distinct lack of what we call jumpers. And jumpers, I'm not talking about these things. Oh no, I'm talking about little plastic things that would bump off very easily when you had a screwdriver above them. But you'd use these to configure your card. Things like IRQ, DMA, the I.O. address and so forth would all be configured by these little tiny plastic jumpers. On this card particularly though, it had no jumpers. And the reason for that is of course that it's all plug and play. All very well if you're using Microsoft Windows 95. If you're using MS-DOS and maybe even Windows 3.1, how do you configure such a card? Well, on this quick episode, I'm going to show you just how to do that. Today I'm going to be looking at the Sound Blaster 16 and I'm going to be installing it into a compact 486 PC. This particular model is the slightly cheaper Vibra 16 version, a 2940 or CT2940. It didn't come with the ASP slash CSP chip and you'll know also on these cards there was an area where you would have the IDE interface. In this particular card the IDE interface solder points are still on it, but um, you don't have an interface um, pins for the IDE at all. Anyway, this card's still a very good card, has very low noise, um, and then it has line out, speaker out, line in and mic in, as well as the obligatory joystick port interface. It's a full 16-bit card and it was made by Creative Technology a later point of the lifetime of the Sound Blaster 16 in 1995. So without further ado, I'm going to open up a compact PC, install the card in the PC, and then set up the drivers and show you how it works and how it sounds. The recipient of today's multimedia goodness is none other than this compact ProLinear 486 PC. It has an overdrive chip which is a 486DX4100. I'll do a video on this machine another time, but today let's get this thing opened and install the sound card. I'll just get this 3Com card out of the way for now and we'll put it back in at the end. Need to take the blanking plate out of there as well. Whoops, that one was in there pretty tight. You can see that that one's got some dirt on it, which is caked on. I don't think that one's ever been removed from the system. Okay, time to put the card in. And just before I close this machine up, two things that I find very interesting about this machine. Firstly, the overdrive chip, which uh, obviously upgraded all these machines at the time. So this one is an Intel Overdrive DX4 ODPR100. So the idea I think with that is that turned this um, DX33 PC into a DX their uh, DX4 100 processor speed uh, back in the day. It would have been quite, 
quite interesting. And the jumpers down here, the processor configuration, actually easily allow for the installation of the overdrive chip. And the second thing which I find very unique about these boards is obviously the skiing dude down here. Not quite sure why, I'm going to find out though. So let's get this box back up and we'll configure the card. So what I had to do first was find myself some drivers. So I found them on philscomputerlab.com. I'll put the link in the description. However, when I got there, I realized that I needed a special kind of driver for the plug and play. Obviously, if you just have a standard card, which is not plug and play, then you can download the standard driver. I had to download the standard driver and also the plug and play driver. The standard driver was called sbbasic.exe and the plug and play driver was called ctcmbbs.exe. First of all, I need to run ctcm because that's the driver which tells the card what settings like DMA and IO address, for example, to set up. Once the card's been told which settings to run, it then restarts the computer and then you're ready to go to install the actual sound card drivers. Next up, I just simply run the SB Basic installer and that will then find the card that I've just configured using the CTCM tool. All going well, it should tell me the base I.O. address, the MIDI port address, the interrupt setting and the DMA settings have all been found. It's plug and play. Once that's done, the system is restarted again to apply all the settings. So, now, all that's left to do is to make sure that it all works. Well, what better way than to test it with a game? But which game to install and test? Hmm, well there's only one choice really. It's id Software's Doom. So let's get this over and done with. Run the install program. Can it see the sound card? Yep. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for today's video on Al's Geek Lab. If you've enjoyed my stuff, why not drop a comment below, or even better, smash that old subscribe button. That just gives me a few last seconds to say many thanks to my two new Patreon patrons, Bob and Michael. If you'd like to spurn me on to make more cool stuff, then please consider Patreonizing me as well. www.patreon.com forward slash Al's Geek Lab. Until next time, thanks very much for watching, I'll see you soon.